Let's talk about endocrine hypertension or high blood pressure. There are many causes of high blood pressure, but one that's being more appreciated in recent years is caused by hormone secretions, such as excess adrenaline, like a pheochromocytoma tumor, excess thyroid hormone from an overactive thyroid, excess aldosterone, which is responsible for sodium regulation, and excess cortisol, or Cushing syndrome. The most common cause of endocrine-mediated hypertension is the excess aldosterone. Aldosterone is made in the adrenal gland. Because it's so common, we recommend patients be screened if they have any of the following problems. Blood pressure higher than 140 over 90, they take three or more blood pressure medications but still have blood pressure higher than 140 over 90, require four medications to control blood pressure, or have high blood pressure and low potassium, or high blood pressure and an adrenal nodule, or high blood pressure and sleep apnea, or family members with an early onset of high blood pressure or early stroke. A parent or a sibling with excess aldosterone would warrant screening you for excess aldosterone. The adrenal glands are like top hats on the kidneys. Their job is to produce different kinds of steroid hormones, especially cortisol and adrenaline. These hormones are necessary for life because they regulate stress responses that control blood pressure as well as how our cells use glucose but the glands also make other kinds of hormones, like aldosterone, which regulates electrolytes. They also make sex hormones, like testosterone, progesterone, etc. Because we do so many CAT scans for other reasons, we often find nodules in glands by accident, and these are called incidentalomas. If we find one of these nodules, we always check it for aldosterone, as well as some other things. Sometimes patients take blood pressure medications that interfere with the tests for aldosterone. So we want to switch or stop those medications for four to six weeks before testing. We still need to give blood pressure medications to keep that blood pressure under 150 over 90 in order to get accurate tests. So we will use different kinds of medications in order to control blood pressure. What tests check for aldosterone? Well, first we make sure you have potassium supplements if you need them. After that potassium level is normal, we'll start phase one testing. Phase one is an eight o'clock in the morning blood test for aldosterone and renin. Fasting is not important, but the time of day is. We will calculate the ratio of those two levels to determine whether we need to do additional testing. How do confirmatory tests work? If the ratio of aldosterone to renin, or the ARR, is at least 20, especially if the aldosterone level is at least 15, we start phase two testing. The patient needs to eat about 6,000 milligrams of sodium every day for three days. The simplest way to do this is to add three cans of Campbell's soup to your diet every day for three days. There are salt tablets, but for some reason they can be expensive and they also make people feel sick. On the beginning of that third day, you continue that high sodium diet and you collect urine for a full 24 hours. We will check this for both sodium and aldosterone. If the sodium is at least 200 and the aldosterone is at least 12, we diagnose primary hyperaldosteronism. Only if these labs are positive do we check the CAT scan of the adrenal glands. If a nodule is detected, we will refer to a specialized facility to check the adrenal veins. This will tell us if that nodule we saw is actually responsible for making the aldosterone. If the nodule is making aldosterone, the best treatment is to take it out. Most people who have their aldosterone secreting nodule removed can come off of their blood pressure medication after surgery. If no nodule is found, excess aldosterone can be treated with medication, either spironolactone or eplerinone. But what if that CAT scan shows nodules on both adrenal glands? 
Usually the safest way to treat this is with the spironolactone or a plerinone, and the outcomes are very good long term. What if the CAT scan showed no nodules, but the glands look bigger than expected? We call this hyperplasia. Sometimes it means there's a tiny nodule in there. Other times it just means the adrenal glands have more cells than usual. The treatment will be the same, spironolactone or plerinone. When you have questions about this topic, the Columbia Adrenal Center has a section about primary hyperaldosteronism on its website. The Endocrine Surgeons Group at endocrinediseases.org also has a section about hyperaldosteronism. And the Mayo Clinic has a section on benign adrenal tumors and primary aldosteronism.